come to the front. I'm going to call this one from the daughter, Stephanie Morgan, to stand up and next to as head of Kingdom and Counter Ministries. What it's about today is we firstly going to administrate heaven on earth by ordaining Darwin as a pastor, an inter international ordained pastor under Kingdom Fire Ministries, which is my ministry that we come from. But because Darwin and Todd are walking together, and I truly believe that their ministry and Kingdom Encounter Ministry will walk together in many ways, um, I would like him to be uh, as head. Um, and I want all of you now to realize this is not just the ordination. I don't just ordain people. It's a responsibility. It's an accountability. When you get ordained, believe me, I don't even want to say it, but the truth is, war is upon you immediately. Hmm. Good. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when you get ordained, you're declaring to the world that you will do everything in your world to reveal Christ in all circumstances. It's not just a title. It's not a position in the earthly realm. It's a heavenly position. And it's all about Jesus. Never, ever, anything else. He's above your family. He's above everything. It's Jesus. It's first love. And for you as a family, more than you and Stephanie together, you're under that same mantle, that same couple. And you two are one. So that responsibility is upon you. Each and every person in life have got blind spots. All of us. And that's why it's so important to be one. So that you cover each other's blind spots. Now, are you a witness here? Yes. Yes. So what is your responsibility? cover them. you also accountable. So if you don't want to be accountable, better run out quickly before I preach. <laughs> <laughs> but, as a witness, you always have to check on them and to see, are they still in alignment with God? Are they still in the covenant and the promise what they are making to Jesus Christ today? A witness is one of the most prestigious places and positions that you can ever have. Because you are representing God here. What does a witness do? A witness releases the blessing of God upon this event or the nation. That said, yes, this is from God. We release the fullness of heaven. So that's why we need to start realizing the importance and the power is when we've got this tendency in life, we walk better. How's it going? That's good. Hey, bless you. Which is sad, bless you. But when you release the word bless you, it means I release the fullness of heaven upon you. Because that's what God told us. Mm -hmm. It's not just here, yeah, bless you. you. You release something as an instrument of God. God told you to do it. So this is the importance. Today, Darwin, we know him. I have known him for quite a few years. And I prayed a lot about this. Um, and I know that I know that I know we have to ordain him, to release him, because it's an upgrade ha happening in his life. And we're Stephanie together with him. It's a launching pad for a, I'm going to call it, a new ministry. Yeah. Yeah. The old's going to be washed away. The old ways, the old things, are going to be washed away. God's going to do a new release. Yes. So this is basically, it's going to feel for you in some ways that I'm starting a new. But you're not starting at the bottom, you're starting there. It's just building further. Because you've paid a price. You've been under some attack. Still. Yeah, I can't go in there. <laughs> but, and now God 
you must see the honor and the privilege to be ordained because this is basically you being ordained in your priest role, your king role, your order of Melchizedek. It's a release. So I'm going to ask you now to stretch out your hands as we ordain God into his priest role. Representing the High Priest Jesus Christ. We come now and we ordain Darwin, Rouse, in his priestly, kingly role. We ask that you release the fullness and the provision of heaven as a king and a priest according to the order of Melchizedek. That you're given. The revelation, the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding, the discernment. Lord, a king and a priest walks in revelation. So I ask now that you release revelation in. You release revelation because Paul said, I received the mysteries of heaven through revelation as a king and a priest. He needs the revelation firstly. Of Yeshua. Yeah. Then he needs some mysteries and revelation. Yeah. How to rule over all of creation. How to be a priest unto God. A king unto God. So Father, I ask that you ordain him in the fullness yes. of his ministry, of his purpose, his destiny and his calling. According to your scroll, your plans for his life. Lord, I ask you in this day that you increase Love and humility, always, Father, every day into eternity. So, Father, I ask now that a trade will take place. His heart for your heart. His life for your life. His thoughts for your thoughts. His plan for your plans. Father, give him eyes to see. Give him ears to hear. Give him the word out of your mouth. And give him your hands yes. and your feet. Yes. And we say thank you. Yes. In the name of Yeshua. Yes. Amen.
because you catapult him into a place of death. You catapult him into a place of wisdom and godly balance and order. I want you to know that and take it as a revelation. What I see is that when God is cutting a season away from you, that represents an old wine skin. Mm -hmm. And he's cutting you totally loose from that. And he start pouring new wine into you that brings depths and brings almost a wisdom far above that you ever. And I see you get some nuggets and you expose the nuggets to quickly. It's times that you have to sit on the nuggets and sit until it becomes a platform in your heart. So God is taking you deeper and deeper into the shaft, the main mind shaft into the depths of his heart. We go represents the glory of God. And while we were worshiping, I saw the three kings coming in. And the three kings represent kingship. And God is calling you both to rulership. And it's not a heavy, it is a spontaneous standing before the kingdom lover of your life. And he will teach you, and he will actually bring you into a place of just abandonment. So expect the new. If you see the old coming forth, cut it away. If there's an old pattern, cut it away because we're in a new season of the sons of God. We're not in a charismatic season anymore. It's gone. God is establishing his kingdom in both of you. And I see how God is just establishing in rulership and dominion. But here is wisdom. Listen to wisdom. Listen to wisdom. Because you run ahead. I actually saw while we were worshiping you like a, a, a horse car. And step, sometimes Stephanie's in front and you catch up and then you just pass her. And the horse part is out of balance. God wants you to run an equalness before you. Amen. I'm going to say, as far as our ministry, we really bless and honor this on the life, both of y'all. And from the day I saw you, it's like John meeting Jesus in the womb. I leap for joy because I really saw my brother. And so we really love you, but we really love you, Stephanie. And since the day you got down here, I've been speaking to that. And I want to add something to it. Yes, you were everything that they said. And I really believe that the light bulbs are coming on, that you're realizing your potential and your purpose in this union. But I saw the spirit of grace coming up underneath your feet not many days from this day. That this thing's going to get a whole lot easier than what she thought it was going to be. Because she felt like if I step into this thing, this thing can be really hard. But there's winds that are about to get up underneath your feet, your feet and lift you up so you're actually not trying down in the mud. It's going to get a whole lot easier from this day forward. I can tell you that's the word from the Lord. That there's going to be a supernatural grace coming along to come alongside him and say, man, we're really supposed to be in union with this. And you fought it for a long time. But God's going to make this thing so easy you're going to enjoy it. It's going to be the joy that's set before you <coughs> that you want to engage this thing. Because you know it's your Father's good pleasure. Okay? So that's what I want to release. And Morgan, you're a bigger part to this thing than what you think. Mm -hmm. I know you're a daughter, but there's really something about you actually coming in union with them over the purposes of what God wants to do in y'all's reaching for this season. It's going to actually give you further things for the future which you're going to walk in. As you come along to help them, God's going to start giving you building blocks even for what you're supposed to do on a larger scale. And Revelation's going to start being added to you. It's not that you're just a good administrator. There's actually a gift of revelation that's supposed to be added to your administration. You can build blocks for stuff in the future. Okay? Bless y'all. Philippines. Who's leaving tomorrow? 
Peru. 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 Sorry. Where's Ben? <coughs> Kevin and Cole from Tanja. What are we going to do? We're going to bless them. Yes. Yeah. 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 Stretch on your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, yes, I say thank you for your sons that are obedient to you, that are stepping out in faith, Lord, in a big way into the unknown. So, Father, I ask that the power and your might and the strength of your anointing will come upon you. That the perfection of your love will sound out of them. That they will change atmospheres. When they set their feet on the ground in Peru, every curse, every demonic power will be destroyed Ooh, yes. in the name of Jesus yes. will be destroyed Father they'll step into that place with power and authority that they'll go and they'll realize that they are rulers that they will administrate heaven that you'll give them the wisdom the authority that they'll step in there as kings and priests according to the order of Melchizedek I ask that you open up their eyes in a greater dimension, yes. their ears, yes. their hearts. Yes. Father, but you make them radical obedient, yes. that they will not enter into any place or try and administrate anything unless you have spoken. Yes. Yes. So, Father, give them the discernment of your voice. Yes. I command their cherubims right now yes. to go and ark over them. I declare that no weapon formed will prosper upon them because they'll be clothed by Jesus Christ. They'll have the armor of light upon them and they'll walk in victory. Lord, representing you as kings and priests unto the great I am. So Lord, I say thank you. Give them boldness. Give them boldness. Yes, and let them go and possess all of their inheritance yes. as kings and priests, yes. ordained, appointed, and equipped by you. Yes. Let your fire come out. Lord, give them feet of brass. Mm. Give them the fire from your eyes. And give them your glory. Lord, I ask that you activate the breastplate. Their crowns, that they will walk in them, be, will be acknowledged by all of creation as kings and kings. Yes, yes. And they will walk in there with an attitude because they are walking in Christ. Yes. Nothing is impossible. They are the instruments of greater glory of the impossible. And let us be a launching pad for the greater things. Let us be the start of the greater things, where yes. they will come back with living testimonies, yes. glorifying. Yes. And I say thank you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 That is good to see people going out into the world, actually just being obedient. People, and that's a big thing in the world. Many of you are sitting here and have had so many messages from the Lord. You must go on an outreach. You must go to another country. You must go on a trip. And every time you look at your bank account, sorry, I can't go anymore. Wow. Biggest mistake you've ever made. You never look at your bank account. Never. You just listen to the voice and you start making arrangements. You declared, I'm going. Because if he sends you, it's his problem, the provision. Yeah. And that's not being arrogant. You just need to respond to the instruction. Yeah. And I've seen so many people across the world that's missed their blessings because they come and say, Ethan, I can't go. It's two weeks before we leave. I haven't got any funds. So, what's your problem? Hello. Got no excuse. I've had many times in my life 
I've even went to the airport at times that I haven't even had a ticket yet. Not a ticket yet. And then suddenly when I arrive at the airport, funds come in and I buy my ticket, I get on the plane. If he said to go, you're going. You start making arrangements. Don't ever make that mistake looking at your bank account. Because once you start looking at your bank account, you took the provision from him away into your own hands. You've just cut down the supply from heaven. Never look in the natural. I've got many. I can give you thousands of testimonies. Get on the plane that I need thousands of dollars. I'm talking about two countries. One you need $10,000. The other one you need $12,000. Because they invite you, you pay everything. You pay the venues. You give them food. Thousands of people every day. You pay your own accommodation, your own flight, your everything. And I get on the plane with a hundred rand. A rand, hundred rand is not even ten dollars in my pocket. And when I get off the plane on the other side, beep beep, the phone message comes to somebody has paid in ten thousand dollars. And it says for and you can never trace that. Next flight, twelve thousand dollars. You don't know where that comes from. Even the banks can't trace it. We know where it goes from. You just get on the plane. You just get going. You be obedient. Because when you're obedient, it commands a manifestation of Jesus. Never look at it. Never look in the natural. Remember your spiritual being first. So you always look in the spirit first. I'm going to talk to you something as one I think it's, it goes in well with the ordination. Although he's got a title given to him because of earthly circumstances, all of you are actually priests. All of you are actually pastors as well because you're walking, you've received last night, we've heard the fullness of the fivefold. So you're actually a pastor as well. And how does your priesthood look like? We've spoken a lot and there are a lot of teachings and we can carry on weeks and weeks and weeks just talking about Melchizedek. Because there's so much revelation, you meet him, you encounter him. Melchizedek is the administrator and the treasurer of the storehouses of heaven. So he's a good guy to get to know. He sits with your keys. He sits with your keys. So you need to encounter him. And he's here. And he's seen him. But he's the next year. He's a real good guy to get to know. He, that's why you need to meet wisdom. Because wisdom is the one that teaches you how to get to Melchizedek to get access to your storehouses. But first you need to step into your priesthood. And I'm going to show you something new. Some of you might have heard it from Jesus. Some not. There's a lady who's here present as well. Her name's hey. Abigail. Yeah. <laughs> Abigail stepped into her priestly order. Mm -hmm. Her priestly anointing. Are we going to read out of it in 1 Samuel 25? This is where David and his men went, and there was a, um, Abigail's husband, um, what is it? Nabal. Nabal had sheep shearers at his place. David's men went out because David wanted provision for his men. And in the past, we see that Nabal's men were coming to David, and David looked after them. They actually said that David covered them, protected them, was a safe and a secure place for them. So this time, when David's men went to Nabal, who was a very rich man in those times, Nabal refused to give any of David's men any provision, and he sent them away. And he actually said that he will kill and destroy them. Mm. But Nabal had a wife, Abigail. Mm. 
And Abigail went and she realized what's going to happen. Because then the servants warned her that David and his warriors are on their way to come and destroy everything <coughs> of Nabal. They actually said, not one man will be kept alive. What happened? I'm going to read for you and then we're going to talk. Verse 21. 1 Samuel 25. Now David had said, Surely in vain have I protected all that this fellow has in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed of all that belonged to him. And he has repaid me evil for good. May God do so and more so to David, if I leave all of all who belong to him, one male alive by morning. And when Abigail saw David, she hastened and lighted off the donkey and fell before David on her face and did obeisance. We read in the earlier um, scripture there about it. We see what she prepared, what she gathered together. Provision and presence and things for it. What does she do? When Abigail saw David, she hastened and lighted off the donkey and fell before David on her face and did obeisance. Firstly, priestly order. What did Abigail ride on? A donkey. A priest. Always humility. What did Jesus enter into Jerusalem? Donkey. What did the donkey do? He carried the greatest treasure of all. Yes. Yeah. Humility makes you the donkey carrying the greatest treasure, the presence of God. Yes. The question is, are you prepared to be that donkey? Because a great leader, a person of influence, can never be that person of influence, that king, unless he's humble, unless he's a servant. A priest is a servant to all. A pastor, whatever you want to call it, is a servant to all. So you're always available to participate, to help, to serve. Not just coming to eat and to drink and shoop, there you go. So you need firstly to become the donkey. This is what Abigail did without her even knowing she stepped into a priestly order. And fell before David on her face and did obeisance. Second key, you need to be on your face in front of the king. You need to die in yourself. You need to have an intimate relationship. You're only going to fall in your face to something and somebody that you know. Somebody that you see their identity, that you know are worthy, somebody that you know are faithful, somebody that you know you can trust. A priesthood starts on being on your face, humble, on your face, trading on the feet of Jesus, trading on the robe of the oil of the anointing of the high priest, being in touch with them. And you can only start worshiping them. Being on your face is a place of worship. It's a place of honor. You can never go into worship unless, unless you have praise. Because it says in Psalm 100, Enter into my gates, enter into my courts through praise and thanksgiving. So in whose presence are you? can't just fall on your face and worship. What are you doing? Because you're not even in the presence. So you first need to praise. You praise them. What happens with praise? When you enter into His gates, into His glory. Wow! Look at that! Bah! On your face. Then you worship. If you go into worship without praise, it's false. Because you've not seen. You've not seen. So what are you worshipping? 
Because every dimension of God is different. Every time you praise Him, He reveals a different dimension. Because every time that He reveals Himself, Jesus, He goes in different realms. He manifests His face in different ways. He reveals different levels of glory to you all the time. It's like fashion, coming the whole time. And you just stand and all in amazement. Yeah. Then you worship. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> There's over three trillion galaxies and every time he reveals a dimension of him, a dimension of him, a dimension of him, a dimension of his glory, it's never the same. He transforms, he transfigures that you and the angels. Wow, holy. Wow, holy. Wow, holy. At his feet, at his feet. At his feet, in the river of oil, in the dripping oil of Aaron's beard, you are standing there in the priestly anointing, lying on your face. Kneeling at his feet, she said, Upon me let this guilt be my Lord, and let your hand, my heart, pray you. Speak in your presence. And hear the words of your hand, handmaid. What does a priest do? He takes everything on himself. Abigail went and she stepped into the gate. Firstly, it was supposed to be a gate of death, of destruction. And she went and she stepped in as a priest. And she took the burden, the curse of all the people of neighbor, let's say the nation, upon herself. A priest always lays down his life firstly. That is, we'll go back in the Bible, you'll go to all the priests, and it says that the priest first entered into the temple. The priest first sacrificed. Then he first cleansed himself so that he can step into the presence of the king. Exactly what Abigail did and said, listen to my voice. <coughs> Listen to my voice because purity, holiness gives you access as a priest into the Holy of Holies. Then I lay down, let the curse come upon me so that the nation gets set free. Let the curse come upon me so that all my fellow lovers of God would be set free. So it's not about you, it's about them. It's not about me, it's about the kingdom of God. It's not about me, but it's about God's desires that He wants everybody to come into the kingdom where a priest lays himself down. Same with Esther, she stepped into it. She went for intercession. A priest is an intercessor. She stepped into intercession, prepared to die. Listen to my voice. What makes her so amazing in this thing as well is in those times and era, no woman was allowed to enter in front of the king. No woman in those time and era were allowed to enter to the priest and go and speak to the high priest. What happens here of Abigail, she shows us the order of priesthood. She shows us that women are allowed to minister. Women are allowed to step into the Holy of Holies. Yes. Because if you go and read in Galatians where it says, no woman allowed to minister, and you go and do the research, it actually says, no newly born women are allowed to minister and teach. Nothing wrong with women teaching, preaching. The greatest revivalists, evangelists were women. In the Old Testament, New Testament, they saved towns, cities. It says, no newly born, immature people are around to go and spread. They need to get a certain maturity. The maturity depends on yourself. You can, it depends on you if you're going to be mature in a year or in 50 years. Yeah. I'll never forget it. When I got saved, 
After a week, the Lord opened my eyes and my ears, and I used to see everything in people's lives. I used to see their thoughts. I used to see their dreams of the night before, all those type of things. And when I tell them, what do you know? You've just been saved. Mm -hmm. They rejected it. As soon as people heard how long you were saved, they rejected you. are still a baby. But I made a choice. I'm not going to listen to it. I am going to get mature and I'm going to walk and I'm going to take possession and step into it. Yeah. This June I'll be saved for 11 years. And the best is all those people that rejected and cursed me within a year later, they all come and beg me, please help me. Please help me. And then you check your heart because you help them. You love them to them. Come on. Come on. Love them. That's good. Kneeling at his feet, he said, Upon me alone, let this kill be my Lord. How do you enter to Jesus? How do you kneel before him? Is it a true act of love, of desire, of your heart, of humility? Or is it just because I have to follow the religion? I have to do that. And let your hand, when I pray, you speak in your presence and hear the words of your hand. Let not, my Lord, I pray you, regard this foolish and wicked fellow Nabal, for as the name is so, so is he. Nabal means foolish, wicked, is his name, and folly is with him. But I, your hand, may did not see you. See, my Lord's young men whom you said. Some translations actually say, Lord, let not this husband of mine, the idiot, Nabal. <laughs> yeah, that's what Rachel speaks, actually, an idiot. <laughs> now I'm going to ask you, when last did you go and stand in the gap and intercede for the idiot's hand? For the wicked ones. Mm -hmm. For your enemies. That's a priestly order. He is representing all. He brings in all. He steps into the pathway of Jesus. Dying, being crucified for all. So that the fulfillment of the Father desires to take place. Let not their sin stand in the way. I want you to bless them. I will take the nails. Forgive. So now my Lord, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, seeing the Lord has prevented you from blood guilt and from avenging yourself with your own hand, now let your enemies and those who seek to do evil to my Lord be as neighbor. What does she do? She starts prophesying mm -hmm. to David. Thank you Lord that you're lifting your hand, not going to avenge what Nabal has released. What do you do? You don't retaliate. You don't face the wickedness. You don't pull yourself down to the wickedness. You pull yourself above the circumstances. And you become rule. What do we do? We start engaging exactly what the devil was. What happened? We open up the canopy of protection upon our families, upon our jobs, upon our churches, everywhere. When we start engaging it like that and we start gossiping, slandering, you pull yourself down and you're just as wicked as any other man. No authority, no power. What did she do? Prophesy. She started prophesying, releasing the word of God, releasing the goodness, bringing out the, the character of God out of David, calling out the gold. What does a priest do? A priest always prophesies. Well, Jesus Christ is your hope, your high priest, and he's the prophet. What did Abigail do? She started without even knowing, she started imitating Jesus Christ. Imitating the character, releasing the character of the Father coming out of her. 
And now this gift which your handmaid has brought, my Lord, let it be given to the young men who follow my Lord. Gift. A priest always comes and he trades. He trades his own things, his own treasures, his own provision, so that everybody else can be set free. Are you prepared to give what is a treasure in your life? so that somebody else can be set free. Are you prepared to surrender so that other people could be set free? Forgive, I pray you, the trespass of your handmaid, for the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house, because my Lord is fighting the Lord's battles, and evil has not been found in you all your days. What is she doing? She's reminding David of the Lord's promises upon his life. That he doesn't have to worry. Lord will be his provision. And that's what a priest does. He always comes and he directs people back to Jesus Christ. He always comes and declares upon them the goodness of God. And she actually prophesies over him the word of God. And the word of God is life. The word of God has got power. What is she actually doing? She's bringing the gold out of David. Yeah. She's activating his DNA. She's activating his sound and vibration so that evil departs from his heart. Because the sound and vibration of heaven inside of your DNA activates your heart, brings your heart and unity and holiness so that God manifests through your breastplate. What does she do? Surely my Lord is a sure house. What does she do? She's restoring David in his position of peace and rest as a king, a sure house. What did the Lord promise David? Your house will always be at the head. Your children will always be the house of David will always rule. What did she do? She restored him into his sonship. Declared his rulership, his sonship as a ruler. You'll be a sure house because you will be walking with God. Yes. Immediately she takes his eyes, she moves it from the earthly to the heavenly. Yes. <clears throat> because my Lord is fighting the Lord's battle. She reminds him who does he represent. You need to remind yourself. That's what a priest does. He comes and says, hey, you need to know. Example, Todd. Don't worry about that. You're representing Jesus. You're sure how you can't lose. What happens? Immediately it restores the joy. I'm a sure house. Can't lose. I'm a ruler. The man is risen up to pursue you and to seek your life. Yet the life of my Lord shall be bound in the living bundle with the Lord your God. She comes to them and says, you have been created for eternity. No man can take your life. Your life is in the hands of Yahweh. What does she do? Immediately when you start knowing, no man can take my life. Because the physical body means nothing. Immediately, you are excited. You become um, ambitious, not ambitious, bold. You become bold. You can do nothing to me. I'm a ruler. I'm created for eternity. That's what a priest does. She, what did she do? She is prophesying. She's reminding David's DNA. She's reminding David's cells. She's reminding David's memory bank. His frequency of it. Who's that God that you knew before you were in the mother's womb and He then made you promises which He has released upon you, which is in your DNA. And what does she actually? She enlightens it because when you speak the word of God and the word of God, it is the breath of God coming out of you, activating, enlightening the word of God that's already been seated in you before you were in the mother's womb. 
What happens? Life into it and it starts manifesting. Let the life of my Lord shall be bound in the living bundle of the Lord your God. And the lives of your enemies then shall he sling out as out of the center of a sling. God's promise. Don't worry about the enemies. Who's going to sling them out? The Lord your God. Not your war. Don't engage in your problems, in your chaos, in your wars. Get above That's it. That's good. Get above it. Who's slinging in and out? God. You're saying He's your shelter, He's your shield, He's your sword, He's your warrior, but why aren't you allowing Him to be it? You stole his position. You shut the doors in his face. I will do it. When you start engaging your promises and your chaos and your difficulties. Immediately you move from a heavenly perspective to an earthly perspective and you're in your soul. You start making your own plans. Start making your own plans. Wrong place to be. Because then you're actually giving the devil legal rights to pursue. Mm -hmm. Now, the easiest thing in all your circumstances, when you face difficulties, chaos, invite Jesus into the circle. Devil, I've seen ahead of my time, I've seen 10, 20, 30 years ahead where I'm going to be, what I'm going to do, you weren't even in the picture. Just face Jesus. I'm going to sit. What happens? He can't stand in the glory. He flees. But when we take possession, he'll stand. Is having that thing to deny yourself and invite God into the picture. Opening yourself up for war when you engage it. Says in verse 13, when the Lord has done to my Lord according to all the good that he has promised concerning you and has made you ruler over Israel. Start prophesying. What does that say? Abigail had an intimate relationship with God because how does she know it? Mm -hmm. How did she know what's going to happen to that? She prophesied. And it says that God in those days, Hebrew 1, it says, in those days God firstly spoke to the prophets. She in a priestly anointing, she stepped into the prophetic and she declared there through her sayings and her prophesying that she knew Jesus, a priest, always knows Jesus. A priest always goes firstly to Jesus. A priest always prophesies, bringing what is ahead there into the now. Why? To activate and prepare a platform for the prophecy to be fulfilled. There shall be no staring grief to you or cause for pangs of conscience to my Lord. Either that you have shed blood without cause or that my Lord has avenged himself. And when the Lord has dealt well with my Lord, then remember your handmaid. What is it? Remember your handmaid. You and I always need to remember what the priest has done. This now turns back to the people, not to the priest. You always need to remember what the priest has done for you. We so many times just take and want and we receive, but are you in awe and amazement and praise and thanksgiving every day? Is that your lifestyle? What has he done for you? What has he done yesterday for you? What has he done this morning for you? Never forget, as a servant of God, as a priest, what the other priests around you have done for you. Always acknowledge and honor the person next to you. Because he's a carrier of Jesus Christ. When somebody sits next to you, she is releasing the sound of heaven. She's releasing it. He's releasing it. She's releasing it. He's releasing it. All the time, he's releasing it. All of them the whole time. So thank them for releasing the presence of God. <coughs> Instead of standing and looking, what is wrong? <laughs> it's the easiest thing. I can go now to each and every person and I'll prophesy and even a monkey can prophesy. 
It's so easy. It's so easy to see what is wrong. And there's not one person sitting, including myself, that has not got it wrong. But what does a priest do? He brings out the gold, so he lifts you up in the glory, and the glory overshadows the darkness, and the darkness is destroyed. Mm. Brings out the character of God. Brings out your rulership, your dominion, your glory. And David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who sent you this day to me. What needs to happen? Same as in... Luke 7, 16. So profound and reverent fear seized them all, and they began to recognize God and praise and give thanks, saying, A great prophet has appeared among us, and God has visited his people. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel who sent you this day to meet me. What happens? Luke 7, 16 manifests there. Blessed be God because he sent his people God manifest that when you and I as a priest walk, the people should say that, blessed to, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, because he visited us, he manifested. That is what a priest does. Wherever he goes, the people must say, bless the Lord, because he visited us. What did he tell ever? Because a prophet has visited us. God has visited us. And that is what a priest released, your priesthood. And this now in the order of Melchizedek, you combine this because in the order of Melchizedek is the fullness of sonship. So all these attributes and characteristics are part of it. You can't separate it. And blessed be your discretion and advice. And blessed be you who have kept me today from blood guiltness and from avenging myself with my own hand. For as the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, who has prevented me from hurting you, if you had not hurried and came to meet me, surely my mourning there would not have been left so much as one nail to David. So David accepted what she had brought him and said to you, Go up in peace to your house. See, I have hearkened to your voice and have granted you petition. First he says, Thank you for your discretion and your advice. A priest gives advice, wisdom from heaven. A priest has got discretion, which is discernment. And he says, thank you that you hurried to come to me. Now, a priest, when he knows there's something wrong in people's lives, he goes to them. He tells them to save them from bloodshed, from pain, from hurt, from evil, from darkness. You've got to ask yourself, have I got that heart that desires to save people, to keep them away from pain, from heartache, from bloodshed, from evil? Well, that's what a priest does. He goes and he intercedes. He takes on the anointing of Abigail. He takes on the anointing of Moses. Moses always interceded for his nation. Every time the Lord said, I'm coming to destroy the nation, Moses went, Lord, take me, but save them. Moses stepped in as a high priest and as a king. Esther came in as a high priest, as a king. Intercession. You know what Moses, and I'm going to share, and some of you will shake your heads, but bless you. <laughs> Why did not Moses not go into the promised land? Not because of the rock that he hid all the time. That was partly reason. What did Moses do as a priest? Remember what I said? Are you prepared to give away everything? Yeah. Moses traded all the time. He went to the storehouse of heaven. How do you know he had storehouse? Moses went up the mountain. He said he went into the mountain. Yeah. Yeah. 
in the dark cloud into the mountain. In the dark cloud is who? God. God. I hide myself in the darkness. So he went into the mountain. How do you get into the mountain? And he met God. What does the Bible talk about? Mount Zion in heaven, place of rulership. That's why he was covered with the presence of God. The dark cloud. In this mountain are your storehouses. So Dad, Moses went into his storehouses to trade for the nation. Lord, I give you my treasures to save them. I give it. So the time that came when he was in trouble that he needed to go into the promised land, he traded his storehouses, everything out. He had nothing more to trade for himself to enter. But because of his heart, because of his life, he was prepared to give everything so that everybody that God loves could be saved. The Lord said, you have favor of money, enter into heaven. Are you prepared to trade? Because that's what a priest do. He trades his everything that everybody else can get saved. And when Jesus died on the cross, it says, and, go, and suddenly everything came dark. And a cloud came upon it. Mm -hmm. Everything was dark. And that's where God shows you at your darkest circumstances. He will come. He'll be there to receive you. He came to receive His Son's Spirit. Yeah. That's why the cloud came, because He's in a cloud of darkness. He came down to manifest Himself upon His Son, to receive the Spirit, so the Spirit of Jesus doesn't go into the depths of the earth so that you and I could have eternal life. own peace I granted you your petition when your heart is faithful truthful in love and aligned to God God tells you go in peace I grant you your petition behind peace we've got so many more Examples that we can go through of priesthood. And now we're in the priesthood of Melchizedek, which is a greater measure where it's all about Jesus. Where he owns everything. You steward and administrate the priesthood on earth. Some sang with tithing and offerings. Now you're in the new dispensation. It's not about tithing your 10%. Yeah. 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 That's a waste. Yeah. That's your starting point. Oh. Now it's about gifts and giving. Lord, how much of this can I keep for myself? Because all belongs to you. Mm -hmm. Lord of Melchizedek. It's about gifts and giving. Not about tithing and offerings. Mm -hmm. Now it's all about Jesus. It's about sonship. And the, the priest reveals the son. The priest stays in the presence, in the glory, in the Holy of Holies. You now have got permanent access. We've read it in Ephesians 2. To be in the Holy of Holies through the Holy Spirit. The power of the I'm going to ask you this morning, are you prepared to become that royal priesthood that God has created? A royal priesthood set aside, set apart for him. That needs to happen. What Abigail did there, she went into the priesthood. When the lady with blood flow, Mark 5, went, she became a priest. She knew I had to be in touch with the high priest. She touched the robe of the high priest. So to get moved back 
into perfection. A priest never leaves or lose the touch of the rope of the high priest. Never leaves the him the touch of the anointing of the oil of God. Although we've ordained them, you've all been ordained by God. You are a royal priesthood set aside. You are kings according to the order of Melchizedek. Before the foundations of the earth. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Father, glory to your name. May you be exalted, may you be glorified through all of us as we acknowledge our priesthood and our kingship this morning. As we acknowledge you as the high priest. Father, I ask that the characteristics of the priesthood will be enlightened in our lives. That what Abigail released there and interceded for will be released upon our lives. That we will be bold like Abigail, like Esther, like Moses, and so many more, like Jesus, to die for the nations, to intercede, and to stay, and to be clinging to Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that you will remove all our worldly idols so that you could become everything. That nothing anymore will stand between you and us. So I ask right now that you will anoint, impart, activate each and every person in that way into that priesthood. Into that love relationship of a priesthood, the desire. So that each and every one becomes one the high priest that wherever we move they'll say the prophet <coughs> God has visited us because we reveal you through the glory the love and the holiness of Yeshua we say thank you Lord Jesus that your sound are coming into us that our priest Lord busy rising up right now. I ask for the angels for the four corners of the earth to come into the place and will cause swirling winds to go and to blow through the people and everything that defiled our priesthood here will be destroyed by this wind's fire and by fire. And we praise you. We love you, Yeshua. Father, I ask that you bless each and every person here each and every family represented, each and every church resident, each and every priest here, with the greatest gift of all, the fullness of your love. In the name of Yeshua Mashiach. Sow into you want to sow directly to South Africa, just put SA on it. 
every bit of that 100% goes right into the, their ministry. And we, we really appreciate the sacrifice. I know even Anita really prayed into that because we were really pulling and saying, no, we really want you and what you carry to come to our country. And so we want to be a strong gate in America to welcome South Africa and what it's hosting to come through. Next month we get your son, Ornay, and my daughter gets to come through our camp. And so I really want us to pray into what we're going to do. We, we bless them every month, $500 a month. And it's an honor to be able to do that. But I want to learn how to really steward honor, what honor really looks like. And that we'd be such a culture of honor, and there's such a culture of generosity through this camp. That we want to be very generous on your endeavors. Because I know as a whole, most people don't know what honor is. And they don't know how to treasure the gifts that are among them. And so I want more than the, the tokens of our appreciation through finances, I want us to really learn how to steward what he's given. Now, Jonathan's taped every session. If you want part of that, you know, if you say, hey, I want this day or this day, you need to contact Jonathan and we can send it out maybe through email. We'll put it on the website as well. Put it on the website. Because you're not going to apprehend all this and just sitting in this this morning. Amen. I'm telling you, thank you just so about Moses trading his life for them to be able to step into that. It was huge for me. And, uh, you know, and Isaiah says that God spends other people on our behalf. And uh, God's really asking us to be spent on the behalf of others. Mm -hmm. And that we could actually buy in and trade into that. And part of my life's been a trade. That I'd spend my life to see other people go to the nations. And so I know we host that. And it's a real sacrifice to spend your life on somebody else's behalf. So I want to trade into what you're trading into us. That we really go deep and say, God, I want to spend some effort of sitting before the Lord. Many of us need to go back through the teachings. I mean, I took notes and all that stuff and I was going back over some of that this morning because literally you know God stewarding stuff inside of us and we should stay on that journey but when you have somebody that comes alongside to co-labor with you and you partake of what they're eating on and you go back in you can take it this week and go that's great in a week from now forget what they brought you did not honor what God brought but the more we actually co-labor then that what that does is it puts a bigger demand on heaven to come through the next time and take us to a whole another level. And you see a lot of people, they stay on the same course forever. And it's like, you know, you know, like me, I love Mexican food. But I know William likes, you know, Italian or whatever. So when he asked me, hey, what do you think? Oh, whatever. Sushi. You know, <laughs> to the sushi house. But you honor them by saying, hey, I want to pull aside and learn what you've eaten. And so to honor it, say, you get yourself a position say, you know what? I'm going to buy into what he's doing, and I'm going to pay a price to go in deep and grab a hold of that. Amen? Amen. So, um, Ed, can we really do honor you? Yes. Now, I just want to share with you. When my son comes, I want to tell you, don't mess it. Not because he's my son, but what he walks in. Man, he blows me away. He's at a place now, he did his thesis now, he's graduating in two weeks' time, three weeks' time. He sees us once on the revelation of the constellations and the and the um, revelance for that on the sons of God. Wow. He walks in the spirit with me. We do things together, go on assignment together. He taught this week on numbers and the system that you are operating under in the spiritual law. Don't miss it. Don't think because he's 22 years old, I'm still a young man. Believe me, don't miss it. You walk in it. Amen. 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 Nita, we really love you. And you're Amen. always welcome. And I hope this is a hot spot for you. <laughs> we, had, we had no internet in our house. And she's trying to relearn how do you live without internet. And I said, you know, we could get you like a good worship. She goes, no, it's been good for me. But, you know, I really want a spiritual hot spot to be here. So when you come through this gate, you really hook up and go places you've never gone. And you have real strong deposits. And so I, I pray that this be first of many. You know, that you really be able to come in and out throughout America. And that America would really receive you and be glad when you come to our land. Amen. 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 It's really a tie between America and South America. Thank you. I mean, South Africa. Yeah, there you go. I was kind of like what Nancy did earlier. 
with the Peru guys. <laughs> There's a real tie to that. And so I'm really thankful that we get to be a part, participate in what's going on with him. Now we'll go home, we'll crack jokes all afternoon, and give each other a hard time. What is Etienne over? The, the prophetic, the uh, schizophrenic <laughs> prophets? <laughs> Y'all don't know what we've been talking about on the back side. We, we've been having a really good time. We're laughing our heads off. And, you know, when you laugh hard enough, your head starts hurting and your ribs are hurting. Anybody yeah. been there? Yeah. Yeah. So we have quite those moments with Anita. Here's a mess. <laughs> Grandma. No, you the mess. There you go. You the one that's okay. <laughs> Anyways, bless y'all. Thank you, Will and Jennifer, for letting us be yes. yes. here. Yeah, thank you. Amanda, thank you for introducing us to Adam. Yes. Adam you're here. Listen, I thank you for really getting down with the guitar. Yes. I, I kept seeing an Indian thing when we come through this vein. Yep. Yep. And so I really was welcoming the Indians to come through our house. So anyways, right after I welcomed that to come through, you started ripping it on the guitar. And I said, Man, there's really something to that. So we welcomed that to come through our house. And maybe land here, it doesn't matter to me, but we really welcome that to come through. And so, uh, y'all really taught me a lot, Etienne, even this week. I feel like I've shifted more in understanding my role of, of doing things more in the spirit realm. And uh, I'm really hoping that next year, you know, I graduate and go a little bit deeper and more. I feel like we are definitely kindergarten. And uh, we're trying to grow this thing up. Huh? No, we're not in kindergarten yet. We're preschool. <laughs> but we're really learning how to engage. Huh? You're not in kindergarten. We're not in kindergarten. Not you. Oh, I feel like. What about you? Yeah, okay. Don't do that. Anyways, we're getting there. Maybe fourth graders. Yeah, Jonathan, you were next on the list. Thank you for my wife. You know, y'all don't know what goes on behind the scenes. They had to move chairs from that place to this place, break all this stuff down, reset it up. Jonathan and Rachel has been a real gift in our house. Yeah. And I'm like, you know. <laughs> there's really something about, you know, we need to learn how, what honor really looks like. And so we want to be a family that hosts a culture of honor and really learn how to honor and sting the ones that God's brought with us. But do you know how lost we'd be if we didn't have a guy that understands sound yeah. and put all this stuff together? Yeah. And, you know, I'm the guy that says, you know what, Jonathan? Just buy whatever we need. We got the money for it. He said, you got the money? I said, we got plenty of money. Just make the sound sound good. You know, it's real frustrating when you have sound that's, you know, tweaks and does all the muffling and all. So for him to actually put this together and have different instruments, and we've never done that over there at the party barn. Yep. And, you know, there's a couple of times it muffled, but, man, I was blown away how good it, yep. clean, crisp, and just to have that kind of deal is a blessing. Blessing yeah. to those that are carrying worship. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's been yeah. trying to get that together. And, uh, Ben, I really appreciate you uh, doing the drums. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're going to learn how to steward on. And I really believe that honor is going to help birth a lot of things yeah. and take things way beyond what it could possibly do because we learn culture of honor. So anyways, I'm, I'm excited. Adam, I'm really pleased with what's going on in your heart. And there's a real tenderness. And uh, Darwin and uh, Stephanie brought their friends from Evansville. Yeah. Really appreciate you coming. Yeah. You know, you don't appreciate tech guys until it's over with. You go, did anybody video that? Did anybody capture the moment? So I really appreciate you. You know, he kept running over the laptop. And uh, there's something about him. He really knows how to honor you. And there's a real spirit of honor on him to really honor you and his wife. And so we really want to just appreciate that. Because when you appreciate those that come alongside you that want to help build and help you actually give you honor, uh, it's a lot of strength. And so we need those who actually come alongside to help 
you know, not everybody comes alongside and helps. You understand that? Some people just come alongside and terrorize you. <laughs> she says tenderize, I say terrorize. She's all perspective. You can tell who's real prophetic here. I'm the David that's going to, you know, I'm going to cut his head off. Anyways. Bless y'all. Thank y'all for coming. Amen. Amen.